Good afternoon. Welcome to my garden, Lilac Hill. I am up here on our second story sun deck off the kitchen, facing west. That is direct west, hot afternoon sun on this deck. And the reason I'm out here is I want to show how I frost proofed the roses that I do grow on this deck. I have 10 roses in total in the garden in different locations. And I have a few of them up here on the sun deck. This is purple loose strife. We pull all the pots against the house to winterize them. They're under the eaves. They seem to be pretty tough. They seem to be able to take it. And then each pot is then wrapped in a bubble wrap with a insulation and black plastic. So it just protects the pot for winter. This is one of the Morden's roses. A Canadian series, Parkland series rose, and this is more than Centennial. Beautiful pink buds still for the end of October. This rose will go into this pot because this was the hybrid tea pretty lady, and it is going to be moved now. It got moved to the lower area, the wetland area. So this rose will go into this that pot. Okay, so then on this side, Carabria, another variegated rose. This is a hybrid tea, but this rose seems to be pretty tough, and I love that dark foliage. At the base of these roses is the most interesting little mushrooms. I notice they are so tiny. They're like little specks. This one too has a mushroom growing on it. Oh, that damp and heat. This is another Morden Rose, Morden Sunrise. And it is a pinky orange color, gorgeous. Okay, so let's just look at the garden from up here. There's the glass house. And the little potting on shed that I'll be using for doing the seedlings next year. We've got a beautiful tree canopy, some really tall trees. Everything just looks very much like fall has arrived in the garden. Here's some birds chirping. So as I come down the stairs, this rose here is a rose from Ed across the street. The daughter did not want the rose to go into the landfill or into the compost, so she said, please take it. And it is a red long stem rose, beautiful, very fragrant. And when I say long stem, it puts on probably between eight inches and a foot of growth a season. So it is definitely a long stem rose. Let's just come around this side. Got a bit of netting on it because it is hard to keep the deer off of the roses. But so far they haven't found its bud, which probably should be on the other side of the net. But anyways, I'll fix that up later. There it is. And again, fragrant, beautiful, fragrant rose. Okay, so let's look at the arbor because the honeysuckle was really tight on the arbor, the last video, and I didn't lose a lot of growth on the honeysuckle. And I took some of the cuttings from that two different honeysuckles. One is lighter than the other, stemmed, lighter stemmed. And this one came from Ed across the street with his, he had a beautiful honeysuckle over the garage. It's still there. So this is cuttings from that. But I took some of the cuttings from taking the honeysuckle off the arbor and I put them around the old hazelnut tree. So I'm hoping the old hazelnut tree will be covered in honeysuckle at some point. I hope they take, I did about six cuttings of this plant, both of these plants. So yeah, I hope they take. You can see Anne's got her wood burner going in the distance. It has a nice smoky fall scent in the air right now. It's just beautiful out. It's very west coast right now. This is definitely west coast weather. And it's been pouring all day, sunny and pouring and sunny. Now we're back to sunny. So as I get closer to the new area that I did complete, I just want to share in this beautiful sun, my fall 
pink chrysanthemum. This is from Auntie Sandra. It is a gorgeous pink bloom. It has bloomed consistently for the many years that I've been gardening, which is since 1998. And it's planted close to the, the uh, wolf's bane, aconite. But I think they look nice together. Might spread that hun or might spread the fall mum out, take a cutting and put it someplace else. Maybe this side could use a little more color with that beautiful pink. The culver's root looks stunning in the sun right now. It's just finishing. I love the dark brown seed heads. The smoke bush young lady is also finished, but putting on lots of new growth for the next season. There are so many plants in here. I document my plants on a spreadsheet to just track what I have and what year I bought the plant and where it's located. Okay, so let's go over and have a look at what I did to make the runoff area. I'm going to go in it from this side. So here is like a damp, like a woodland area. That area beyond is Anne's, what we call the sort of like meadow. So the property line is right here. And I've got a Great Dixter inspired brush pile where I'm hoping some habitat will happen. Anywhere where the birds can perch and get away from the predators. There's so many cats in the yard and I see a lot of birds perch on those branches. Then I've got a nice stump here, kind of like my own beginnings of a stumpery. Look at the bark on this. This is so pretty. And it gets a lot of, of mushrooms. It's a mushroom colony down there. really pretty and then as I pan around here this used to be the path but I took all the soil away and then as you get lower down now it turns into boulders and this is an interesting piece that Shelly and Harvey across the street gave me it has a big hole in it and we figure it was probably used as a boon for the logging industry so that's kind of cool have that in the garden as a feature. Then there's pyrocantha back here now because I thought it needed to, needed to go in the ground. It was one of the plants that was in a pot. And I think the berries of the pyrocantha play off beautifully against the holly. And if an animal or a little bird wants to come and have a snack, there's something there. And then on this side is beautiful big boulder with lots of hidey holes, places to build habitat and shelter. Then the hollies have their berries now. They look beautiful. With their red berries. Gorgeous. Really nice. Now as I get to the top of this rock, I don't really want to go any further. There is to get the idea the water runs over that rock, goes down the side of the big giant boulder, and ends up in that mucky little crevice underneath that big, big boulder. I think that's a great little ha new habitat. And then to hold back the soil, because that is on a slope, is a little red brick retaining wall done by me. And then that is the home now of the Pretty Lady Rose. The deer are probably gonna find that rose, but I'm hoping that I can do maybe some barbary along here and maybe another, that Rosary de la Haye shrub rose is extremely thorny. That might go in here too. And even some Ligularia will do well. That is Euonymus Chicago Fire in the background. Just a beautiful fall color plant plays beautifully off of the Oregon grape. Okay, so one other thing I wanna share is the last video I mentioned that I planted some bulbs. So rather than just show the pots with soil, because that's where my bulbs are, they're all potted up, I'm gonna go in the glass house 
and I will share the cards that are the bulbs for 2025. I'm already planning ahead. I just passed by the beautiful chrysanthemum from my Aunt Sandra. Isn't that beautiful? It's a cutting from many years ago. Yeah. Oh, and I also have these emerald and gold eonymus for my fall interest now. I got five in the city on our last trip. I think they might be nibbled by deer, but I think they're going to be really tough little border plants for winter interest. I've also put some frost wrap around the Daphne. There are three Daphne in the garden, one over in the rhododendron corner, the big one out front, and then this little one here that you don't really see because of the peonies. Once the peony foliage dies down, the Daphne in the spring will bloom, and it's just a great way to bring in the spring season before the peonies come up. Okay, so let's go in the blue house, or the little glass house, the blue door, and we'll have a look at the cards for the bulbs that I've got for 2025. There's that beautiful West Coast horizon. The other morning, a flicker sat on this house right on the peak and checked out the hole. I thought that was so sweet, but the flicker is way too big a bird for that hole. But it inspired me to think that maybe I need to put up some more bird houses. Terry has so much scrap wood that we could easily build some bird houses. So here in the glass house, oh, I can feel like quite a change in the temperature. I'm just gonna close the door behind me. I like the door locked closed. This feels more cozy. So the sun is shining in. The bubble windows do a really good job of keeping the hot direct sun off. Anything that could potentially be growing in here in the future. They also act as a bit of a privacy screen so I don't have to look down at the neighbor's roof line. And so there's my chair. Come out here and have a nice cup of tea. And uh, just take in the wildlife. That's always something happening out in the garden. Really beautiful sunny afternoon out there right now. Looks so pretty outside. So this one is the Blanche de Colbert. It's a white shrub rose. And it is just being winterized in here temporarily because it's in a plastic pot. And we could get our hard frost anytime now. These are the cuttings I took of Choicea and Lavender. The Lavender is Platinum Blonde. And then the little U cuttings. This is all going into that wet woodland runoff area to kind of make a hedgerow and dense that up a bit more so there's more habitat for wildlife. This side are some cuttings I took for Samantha, my friend in the city. See if they grow on. And there's just some small plants. That's an obedient plant there, the pink one. And just things that I found in the garden that I want to try and grow on. I miss my dahlias and sunflowers and zinnias. Oh my gosh. To not have them this year was quite, uh, I was quite upset about that. So that won't happen again because now that I've got a glass house to help me with my seedlings. So here are some of the cards of some of the plants I've got for 2025. Let's see if I can make sure that's in focus. So Caribbean Dream Hyacinths, some little tete -tete double daffodils, and then this one is the Tulip Daydream. And this one is Nectra. Wow, that's a long word. Well, you know it. It's just this one. <laughs> you laugh. <laughs> this plant is amazing for bees. I've had this bulb before. And if you get to see that in a garden center, buy it. It's, it is absolutely covered in bees in the summer. Everyone grows the tulip. Queen of the Night, I think it's one of the most popular tulips in the world. 
beautiful dark color. And finally, my crocuses got refreshed with a new batch of bulbs put in. And that's just many of the bulbs for 2025. Tomorrow is October 29th. It is my birthday. And Terry bought me more bulbs. He kept them secret, but I know they're bulbs because he asked me what I wanted and I said bulbs. And I said, just make sure they're deer resistant. And he, he did get me some more bulbs. So I'll have those to plant as well. And there's, I think six boxes of bulbs in a bag waiting for me to open tomorrow morning. So thank you for watching on this beautiful fall afternoon. Look at that sky.